On a Wednesday morning, I call it your midweek thriller. It's Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. Now, I laugh this morning. I really, really laugh. And I'll talk to my guest later on the show, and you will know why I'm laughing. Now, eight new players in the Golden Eagles team missed the chance to be part of the team after they failed the magnetic resonance imaging test ahead of this month's under-17 African Nations Cup in Morocco. Now, we learned, our correspondent learned, that the players underwent the age test of February 23rd in Abuja but failed to make the required grade in the team. Now, a team official who spoke on the condition of anonymity said agents and top ministry officials had been trying to influence the final selection of the team. Meanwhile, the media officer of the team, Francis Achi, said they would do everything possible to make Nigerians proud. Now, good morning, Brownson. Good morning, Wally. Let me start with you, Brownson, on this one. It's sad yes. that um, we will not lie. Don't let's lie this morning. Nigerians lie about <laughs> their ages. Even their parents will swear on everything that their child is that age because they want him to be like Mikel and Obafe Martins and the rest of them. But the MRI scan has found out eight players in that team are not that age. Please, let's start with that first. Well, uh, am I surprised? No, I'm not. Uh, because it's like, um, it's like a, a norm in Nigerian football. I mean, don't let us go back and start calling names of players who have been involved and that you know that I know. For instance, there was a, a picture <laughs> that trended two weeks, <laughs> two weeks ago about um, a certain club in the second division that signed a goalkeeper and the goalkeeper said he was, is it 21 years? And when you look at the ball headed man and, and his face to be 21, uh, it, it tells a whole lot. But for the under 17 team, if you look at the reasons why our players have not done well in the age grade competition, progressing to the Super Eagles, you will see that um, most of them is a result of this age cheat in football. For instance, the player plays under 17 football and at the under 20, and on that 23, 23 level, where his career is supposed to be at the peak, he's already tired. What does that tell you, Wale? So, for at the 17 level, we are successful, the most successful team in the world at the 17 level, because of what we do to win that tournament. Now, does that translate to the other 23, to the Super Eagles, to the World Cup? It doesn't. Because we use these guys when they're at their peak to play in a 17 tournament. All thanks to the MRI that uh, now that is been in use. I don't know how they did it in Nigeria, but you know, Nigerian MRI, I think is kind of different from what we have in the other part of the world. And that distinguish everything, but really, it's really a shame. And um, we know where to get on the 17 players if we want to. Let's go back to secondary school, principal's core. That's where it starts from, inter house sports. We can get these guys on the 17 should either be in SS3 or probably just leaving the secondary school. But we pick under 17 in Nigeria from uh, Kano Pillars, from Heartland of Oweri. Which 23 years old will be playing in one of these clubs in Nigeria? It's a big question. To, uh, okay, let, let me go to I'm Kayowa. Happy, I'm happy this is happening. Yeah, let me go to Kayowa on this one. Now, Kayowa, I know we're supposed to be discussing Manchester City. Okay, he's not here yet. Okay, L let me come to you, Brownson. The truth be said, Brownson, um, most of the problems that we have in the Nigerian Super Eagles is because we have lied about our ages. We have consistently lied. And that's why you... See, nature will not lie. You, if you can't cheat nature, really. And we have consistently lied about our ages. And we find that our players who are supposed to be 25 for the Super Eagles are actually 34, 40, 45. How can you cheat nature? What can we do to ensure that we stop this lying and age cheating? Um, it's, it's, it's really sad. It, it's a systematic thing. I, I mean, for instance, in the last World Cup, we took the youngest player, the youngest goalkeeper in the world to the World Cup. Supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, yeah, supposedly, right? Yeah, supposedly, yeah. The youngest goalkeeper got injured and is taking as long as it would take a 30-something-year-old a, a man to recover. I mean, if you are 17, 18, 19, at that time, the goalkeeper, I'm trying not to call his name, was 19. And he got injured, was supposed to take like, you know, probably a shorter time to recover because of his age, but he's taking a longer period. What does that tell you? Now, I, I think we, we, we already know the answers of this thing. I think the authority, they know 
But you know, sometimes because of um, um, the uh, the fact that we, we have uh, round pegs in square holes, we try to use eight sheets to validate success. That will solve the Nigerian problem. So let's go back to secondary school. Let's go back to the street. Let's go back to you know our environment. We have there are lots of young players who fall within this age category. Another problem we have also is that some of these players does not even have the money to pay to get into the national team. Exactly. Why do you think? Um, exactly. Uh, why, why, exactly. Why do you think the media officer is talking about influence? People trying to influence the coaches and the people that are in charge of selections to get into the team, agents and all of that. They want these guys to go and showcase themselves so they can get good deals. The coaches are cashing out. Everybody, don't let us uh, expose some of these things on this show. But uh, we know the problem. Let's go back to school. We want to get rid of the 17th the truth be fact, said, be 16 at the time. The truth be said, Brownson, the essence of us having a show is because we want to expose things that are wrong so they can get better. We know for one that our coaches collect money. And the guys who are very good, who are raw talent, don't have the money to pay. Christantus Macaulay got one of the biggest clubs, best clubs in his team, Hamburg, in Germany, the Bundesliga. And of course, he was injured at age 18. And the doctors were like, how can you be 18 or 17 plus <laughs> and be injured? And you have a leg injury for one year. Then you are not plus 17. You are, you are actually older. That is a problem for us, and it's a problem for them too, and our national team. Yeah, it, it also tells you of um, a certain little Messi, Stanley Okoro. I mean, Stanley yeah. Okoro uh, in, in that tournament was, was the finest thing to happen to football. It was likened to Lionel Messi. As a matter of fact, we thought we had found the next JJ Okocha. But this guy, at the age of 22, he was already tired. He got to Spain, got a club in Spain, played one or two. He, he, he didn't play up to a season, by the way. He played some few, three to six months. He got injured, and that was the end. So we know these problems. We know these problems. Our, our administrators are killing our football. That's why you see in the World Cup, we are still struggling to get to the semi-final level at the World Cup. Now, well, it, it, it is a simple mathematics. If we are very good at the under-17 level and this crop of players, that's what happened to Spain, by the way. This crop of players progressed to under-20. This same crop of players moved to the dream team or whatever. From this, maybe few additions makes it to the Super Eagles. There's no way these boys will not dominate the world. But how, will, how, how is it possible that we dominate at the 17 level and we get to some certain level, these same players? I mean, I, I used to remember Jago, for instance. Where is that Jago today? So these are questions. And um, I, I, I think this MRI is a, is a revelation. And I mean, we don't learn. We, don't forget that this same MRI last tournament, Nigeria suffered from it. A few years down the line, it is the same issue. So it's not like the administrators quickly, don't know the age of this player. Quickly, it, Brownson, it, let me ask you. For them. Quickly, Brownson, let me ask you one question before we go to my next story for today. Now, can we say the MRI scan is a hundred percent foolproof? I'll tell you why. We know a case some years ago, about eight years ago, where twins, what we call in Yoruba language, Taya and Kende, or Odio and Ahiri in Edo, they actually did the MRI scan. They were in the same team. One of them passed. And one of them failed, but they are twins. How does that happen? So maybe the MRI scan is not exactly what we, we think it is, really. So for, for the MRI, I, I want to say the MRI scan is 70% accurate. Okay, 70% now. 70% for human okay. errors. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can say it's 70% accurate and then leave the 30% for human error. In the case of the twin, it's uh, a one in a million case. Uh, you know, these things happen in football. But in that kind of case, the MRI will be conducted again, you know, in that kind of play. And also, don't forget that body type and genes are different. For the fact that twins, you know, there are some things, uh, element that, uh, or factors that might make the other one to, to pass and the other one fails. But uh, while in Nigeria, I want to believe the MRI 100% in this case. Uh, I, I want to go with what the MRI have decided in the case of these players. Though uh, sometimes there could be error in these things, but I mean, uh, Nigeria, we are king of its cheats. And um, I'm one of the advocates that under 17, as a matter of fact, under 16, she represents Nigeria at the under 17 level. Okay. Brownson, I'll come back to you. I have a guest, another guest on the show. His name is Kaiowa. Don't go anywhere, um, um, Brownson. Now, Gabriel Jesus scored two late goals at Manchester United beat Wolves. Now, Pep Guardiola believes Manchester City have come through hell and done something more than remarkable by overcoming a tough winter schedule to extend their winning run 
to 20 games in all competitions by beating Wolverhampton Wanderers. Their 4-1 victory courtesy of three goals inside the final 10 minutes means City have not dropped points in the league since drawing with West Bromwich Albion on 15th December and are now 15 points clear at the top of the table. Now, during the time they have played 21 games in all competitions, reached the final of the League Cup, the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, and taken control of their last 16 Champions League tie against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Now, an unlikely second half equalizer from Corner Cole, cancelling out Leonard. Okay, we'll, we'll come to that. Now, Manchester City. I think I have Kaya on the phone already, on Zoom already. Kaya, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Kaya. Now, Kaya, everybody has spoken about not having a large squad. Now, Manchester City don't particularly have a large squad. But what is the winning mentality they have? They've won 21 games and not lost any. How are they doing that with a small squad that they have? You know, the, the fantastic thing about... Sorry, thank you. Thank you for so much for having me today. Thank you very and much for coming. It's such a delight to speak about my favorite club. <laughs> uh, but the fantastic thing is not necessarily the fact that we have a small score. It's the fact that we are also playing games more frequently than ever. Um, so what we have now is that we've, we've done 28 matches on beating, and we've achieved that within um, November and April, and between November and March. And the last time we, um, the last club to achieve that did that between April and December. And that was us now. So you, you can understand that what took one team eight months to do is what Man City has been able to do within four months. So it shows two things. Number one is the quality of the coaching team, not just Pep alone, but uh, the, the entire coaching crew and the mentality of the players. It's been, it's been amazing. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, Kayawa, you, you just heard Pap Guardiola. He says sometimes we attack too quick. I don't know what that means, but they always pressed Wolverhampton Wanderers. They were always getting back right at them. What attacking too quick means, I don't know, really. But he just said that we att sometimes we attack too quick. What does that mean? You know, you know Pep has, over the years, um, been known as the tiki taka coach. Mm. And... Um, for him, the process is as, is as important, if not more important, than the result. The build-up play is very key to the success of the Tikitaka style. And if you notice yesterday, very immediately when our team um, equalized, you saw the urgency within the team trying to immediately find an answer. And I felt that the transition passing, I felt it was too fast, and thereby we had lots of chances, but we were unable to, put, uh, to, to convert it. The truth is this, you have to give it to that guy. I, I usually call it the the bad genius. You have to give it to him. Uh, he's been able to build a, um, a dynamic within the mind because I feel this thing happens in your mind before it happens on the pitch. Sure. He's been able to build that that psyche, that mentality. Bra that Bra Bra Brownson, you, 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 are, you are saying something. What, sorry, Brownson. What did you say, Brownson? I, I... I mean, you know, sometimes when I listen to Manchester City fans, uh, it, 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 it's worrying <laughs> because. Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola hasn't done anything different from, I, I mean, I, I think the he, real hero of Manchester City is Roberto Mancini. Male Pellegrini came into the club and, and won both the league and league cup. Mm. Pep Guardiola, for me, has failed because he was brought in to dominate Europe. He has spent one billion pounds and he's still here to dominate Europe. It, as a matter of fact, um, I can coach Man City and go 30 game unbeaten. Kaiwa, did, you, did, you, did you hear that, that. Kaiwa? Did you hear that? Yeah, done, usually, I, I totally agree with him because usually um, the defeated sides usually are usually the loudest. Anything, so anything. it's normal that such um, such uh, <laughs> vexations get air. Yeah. But you need to understand two things very clearly. Number one thing is this. No one, there is no team dominates Europe without first and foremost dominating their local league. Go check history. You must first dominate your local league. And one thing you need to understand is in the in Premier League, we are the only team in the last 10 years have been in Champions League. In the last 10 years, they, we've not missed it for one year. We have the highest UEFA coefficient in the entire Premier League. 
So if you talk about dominating Champions League, for instance, or dominating Europe, you do not get to that overnight. It's a process. And the most difficult, everyone who has won Champions League will tell you, the most difficult league to win is the league of your country. So, yes, for the first time we've got into semi-final, we're progressing in Champions League. But even Premier, or even Manchester City themselves, the guys who hired Pep, has told us very clearly, Pep was not brought in from Champions League. He was brought in to dominate English football. Brownson, and, Brownson, Kayawa will continue to speak about yes. Man City well. He says Pep was not brought in for Champions League. I'm hearing that for the first time. I'm that shocked. You, I'm shocked too. For the, for, for the first time, oh. because Kayawa oh, shocked the, me the, too. The coach before Pep. No, you need to. You you need to. Um, every season, at the end of every season, there's always an interview with the chairman of um, of um, Manchester City. Every season, and I, I'll just uh, oblige you to go watch the last two seasons and watch. It's just one hour. Kayawa, let me go to Brownson on this one. Uh, Brownson, do you agree with yeah, the fact that? So, sorry, sorry, Kayawa. Brownson, would you agree with the fact that Pep Guardiola was actually brought in to win the Premier League and not the Champions League? I mean, uh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm still trying to move my legs because it's the first time. When Manuel Pellegrini, Manuel, before Pep was brought in, Pellegrini was the winning, in fact, he won the league that same season. But because of their poor performance in Europe, he was, he was booted out and they brought in No, Pep. no, no, Pep no, no, Pep no, was, no. Pep because, was the because, um, Kaiwa, oh, let, let, let's, arguing. No. Kaiwa, let's hear him, let's hear him, let's hear him. <laughs> okay, go on, go on, Grandson, go on, go on, I can hear you. <laughs> And and Pep was the Pep was the Messiah that they brought in. Uh, I mean, don't forget uh, he, he came with the bounce of even though he, he didn't win Champions League in um, in Bayern, but of course in in Spain he did that with FC Barcelona with the experience, lot of expectations. He came. I mean, if, if you look at the defense in that defense, you can Google it. He had spent five hundred million pounds on his defense alone. The midfield. Don't let us press calculator and check how much, how many million pounds. There's no one that won't achieve much success as Pep Guardiola with the kind of money he's spending. January brought in some players. In the summer, I want to assure you that he can decide to play the whole midfielders and bring in new sets of players. Which manager will not succeed under such circumstances? So I, I, I think the hype on Pep Guardiola's success, it's, it, it, it's overdrummed. It's too loud for my, it's too loud in my ears because um, Wale, you will do well. In, in, I mean, you will win your first title. With um, Manchester City, I don't think so. Two seasons ago, Kayawa, Kayawa, Kayawa. He says, Kayawa. Brownson is saying that we are overblowing Pep Guardiola's successes, and he's not doing as well as we are making it seem. What? Let, do you? let me let me shock you. In the last season, last season, we were not the highest spender in the transfer window. Okay. Two seasons ago, we we're not the highest spender in the transfer window. Mm. Three seasons ago, we're not the highest spender in the transfer window. Cumulatively, over the last six years, Manchester, C Manchester United has spent more money on player transfer than Manchester City. Please, uh, the last time we checked, what was the best, what was the best uh, league finish for Manchester United? Cumulatively, Liverpool has spent equally as high as Manchester City over the last four years. Now their key players are injured, mm -hmm. and now they have nobody to fall back to. You also need to understand that if you're talking about spenders or the the the, the top ten highest player transfer, the, the top ten highest speed for, for player transfers across Europe, none of them is in Manchester City, not one. You have the likes of uh, uh, the likes of Paul Pogba. You have the likes of um, mention them. They are all over all over the clubs in England. Should I, no, tell you how much, City. should I tell you how much Manchester City defense is worth from your goalkeeper to the last four? But uh, uh, let me, before you ask me that question, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Have they proven they were? We've only considered 17 goals in 20, 25 or 26. Brownson is asking you, Brownson is asking you a question. Have they proven they were? That's because they have the financial power to get the very best. No, that is because of wise investments. <laughs> We have not spent the most money, but we have yeah, gotten the most value for the what, money what we have spent. Investment without the funds. That's what we're talking no, no, about. No, 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 no. We have not spent the most yet. We have gotten the most value for the amount we spent. That's the wisdom. I don't have a problem with spending more money. I told you, Manchester United have spent more money than we are. 
you yourself cannot refer to Manchester United as a team dominating. In, in fact, they can't even dominate Manchester. Top place of England. Bronze, Bronze, can I ask? Respect my money. Kaya, what's going on? Bronze, can I ask you a question? Would you give the league to Man City okay. at this point? No, well, no, you need to give it to us. We've taken it already. <laughs> actually, I'm asking Bronze, not you, Kaya. Bronze, would you give the league to Man City at this point? Well. With, uh, with, with, with 10 points clear, I, I mean, I, I don't see Excuse City sleeping at this point. Excuse me, 15 points clear. I think with 15 points clear, I don't see City sleeping at this time. I mean, it's just how many, how many, day, how many games to go. We've we'll played 20-something games. Less than it's just games 12 games to go. So, to go. 12 games so, to go. so it's, it's done and dusted. I think City should be given the title already. They need just four wins to, 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 to win the title. Kaya, the why, next four Kaya why is clapping for you already, Zev? Because we have said the... the, the Thank so, you. For uh, the first time, you have said the fact that it's equal so, to Vatibo. As, as an analyst, I have to say the way it is. <laughs> but I need to understand that we, this will make it the first trophy in five years. That is what you call domination. But, 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 the but, first but, Premier League in five but, years. Brown, so let me ask I, you. I, I, I Brown, appreciate so, if, this if this dominant is taken to Europe. I mean, that, that's what yeah, I call it's good dominant. to appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's understandable that you appreciate it is taken to well, Europe. Guys, but you guys, cannot undermine what is being done in England. Guys, let me ask you a question. Somebody once said, Jose Mourinho precisely, and Pep Guardiola said, you cannot win anything if you don't have a large squad. Manchester City don't particularly have a large squad, and they are doing everything right now. I, I'm, I'm surprised. What do you mean Manchester City does not have a large squad? As a matter of fact, the reserve of Manchester City will win a game in the Premier League. Wow. At, at no. Wow. No. It, they, yes. they are, they are two, you're confusing two, two things. Seasons ago, a large two squad. seasons ago, Mourinho was asked... When he was an analyst, he was asked the, the, the team that is likely to win the Premier League. He said, Manchester City and Manchester City Team B. What does that tell you? They have the best and the strongest. They have man for man. If Aguero is injured, Gabriel Jesus will stand in. If Laporte is injured, John Stone will stand in. Let, These are let, guys let that were bought with a huge amount of money. Kaya, why do you agree? No, 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 Kaya, no, no, why do you no, agree no, with no, that? No, you no, agree no, with that, Kaya. First and foremost, the assumption that you're bought by a huge amount of money is wrong. Aguero was bought for 27 million pounds. Gabriel Jesus was bought for 15 million pounds. So first, forget that. Secondly, what, you're confusing two things. You're confusing the, the well, squad size versus quality of score. Squad size, we're not, we're not a huge team. The quality of score, you have to give it to the investment. And I'm going back to that investment. You need to understand that how many strikers, let's look at our, our direct competitions. How many strikers does uh, Manchester United have? Six. Six, have, are, six, I no? think. Six. They have no, almost six. four or five. Yeah. No. Thank you. You know, sometimes some players, some players mistake forward players for strikers. Oh, God, they have oh, one now, out for, and out Let's not say forward the players. Forward players. How many strikers do they have? They have Ebisic Cavani. They have um, Martial. Mr. They have Howard, um, Martial. Um, ex These guys are forward players. They're not strikers. How many strikers do Manchester City have? Two. Sergio Kudanguero, Gabriel Jesus. That's about it. Yeah. Gabriel Jesus. That's only two. two strikers. Yes. Exactly. And United so have one striker. Last, we've won the last 15 games without a clear striker. So you can say all you want to say about Pep. You cannot deny that he's a, he's a genius. Forget but Bra it. But Brownson, you, Brownson. We, we Brownson. Brownson, Kayawa says yes. that yes. Pep Guardiola is a genius. I remember, I'm a Manchester United fan. I remember there was a game against Manchester United and Pep Guardiola took Ole Gunnar Solskjaer off the shelf. He actually made Kevin De Bruyne a dummy striker and he took us out. <laughs> he took I us like out. I like it when people confess I don't know who does that. what it is. Thank you, thank you for... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the truth is sometimes um, you, you you can't you, you can't overlook the quality of Manchester City. That's why I feel uh, City dominance um, has to do with their paycheck. I mean, they've been able to attract the best players in the world. And um, success course, attracts more success. Thank it's you very much. Well. Thank um, you very much, Brownson Owana, for coming <laughs> on the show today. Thank you very much. You are always appreciated, Brownson. Thank you very much, Kaya Wagunidi. I will have you again over the weekend on Saturday. Please be around. I beg. You have to talk about this again. <laughs> thank you very much, Kaya Wagunidi. I enjoy talking thank to you. you. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, bro. Nice to <laughs> thank you, Brian. Right, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much, Kaya Wagunidi. They were my guests on the show today. We had a wonderful time. Join us same time tomorrow for another edition of Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa.
My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. Mm -hmm.